hockey is going to be one of the more inclusive sports. And I think another facet of that that's also up and coming is like the socioeconomic disparities and who, who can play hockey and what the access is. Right. So um, I think we've got a lot of game changers, forgive the pun, but we've got a lot of game changers out there right now who are seeking to make our game better, make our game more inclusive, both on the men and women's side um, at pro levels, at beer league levels. Right. Um, but it takes time and it takes effort and it's sure as heck not easy. Right. So um, my hope is that queer folks can be at the forefront of all of those movements and demonstrating for everyone else what inclusivity truly means. My name is Emily Walsh. I'm uh, located just outside of Denver, Colorado, uh, in a town called Henderson. Um, I work at the University of Colorado Boulder in uh, with undergraduate leadership development programming. That's very cool. Yeah. How did Emily get into hockey? So uh, my dad played when he was a little kid and um, hockey was pretty much one of my first words. I was on the ice just several months after being born, you know, in his arms, obviously not on skates. That would have been awesome though. Um, and so I played growing up as a kid, I was pretty much the only girl on my team um, and whatnot. So I've been into it ever since I was a lot younger. That's great. And that's really cute. Yeah. Um, what do you love about hockey? I mean, really, it's the community aspect of it. Um, I'd say 80% of my friends are hockey friends that I've made um, throughout the years. Um, one of my best friends from high school I met because she transferred in uh, sophomore year, first day. And I was like, hey, what's your name? What do you do? And she said, oh, I, I play softball. I'm a catcher for softball. I said, we need a goalie for our hockey team. We just started. You should, you should join us. And she was in my wedding and we've been friends for gosh, almost 20 years now. And so, you know, hockey just really brings people together. They're the people that show up at, at your parties. They're the people that, you know, on Thursday nights at 10 o'clock when you're heading to the rink, it's not like, oh, this other thing I have to do. It's Oh, I'm going to go see my people and be around my people. And I think there's just such a unique sense of that um, within the hockey community, specifically women's hockey, from my perspective. Yeah, it's it's pretty wonderful. And, and that we these communities in different forms are are what seems to be what drives people and what they love about the sport. And, and I love to see it. Um, how could hockey be better for you and your intersection of identity and also for the queer community as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. And so I have the really unique opportunity to have the intersectionality of being a female queer hockey player, um, which by and large, I would argue that the women's hockey community is far more accepting of LGBTQ folks um, than men's hockey, right? Um, and I'm sure through your own trials and tribulations, you've experienced that too, right? But I'm so lucky in the sense that when I walk into the locker room, at least half of the women in there identify as LGBT. Um, we've got, you know, another percentage of them are moms. And, you know, so there's, you know, kids having breakfast in the locker room with their mom, right? Because that's what has to happen. And I, I think that's such a beautiful part of the women's sport. Um, but I think along those lines, spots in hockey for young queer kids, right? So um, both boys and girls, that's something we got to work on, right? The representation A of women's hockey is not nearly as strong as it should be for young girls. Um, but, and there's only a handful of, you know, LGBT women's hockey players that are, that younger girls can look up to for sure. But the boys, right? Like that's such a struggle. We need more out and visible pro players um, and even college players, high school players to set that example for those younger kids, right? Um, I, I think being comfortable in who you are, right? That's what hockey's about is being on the ice and being who you are and playing your game with the people that you love, right? So why can't you bring your full self to that? Um, I think it's really important that, we have players at every level living their authentic selves for the sake of the future of the game, really. I um, couldn't agree more on all of it. Um, so is that what keeps you in the sport or what keeps you here? 
so it's kind of a combination of things, right? Um, back to that role model. Um, I used to I used to coach the ACHA D1 women's team for the University of Denver. And I distinctly remember, um, you know, we don't have a team bus because we're underfunded, right? So when we go and play games in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, we drive ourselves in those little, you know, Dodge Grand Caravans from one city to the next. And I had about three girls in my car uh, and half the bag. So it was a really nice smelling ride. Um, but we were going from um, Madison or Minneapolis to Madison and we're on the highway and the girls are in the back talking about their role models growing up and who they liked and who they followed. And it hit me with this such profound sense of like, I didn't have that right? 98 was the first time the women were the, in the Olympics. And, you know, the national team made a splash in 92, 94, 96, for sure. But at that time, it was still kind of, oh, that that's sort of happening. Um, and now as I'm playing women's hockey, and I'm coaching younger girls, it's exciting to see how many girls are getting into the sport, right? Um, and so I, that's why what keeps me in hockey, right, is that I know our game is growing in this really beautiful way. Girls hockey is one of the fastest growing sports in the country right now um, of any and all sports, which is really cool. And there's no denying, right, like my community of friends that I found who are LGBT have within hockey, right, like. I don't know if you could get more of my people, right? <laughs> it's people who love to play the sport that's part of my very existence, people who um, understand what it was like growing up as a kid, being LGBT specifically in the hockey community. And they're my family, right? The bottom line is the people you play with become your family. You travel together, you share hotel rooms together, you, you know, circle up when somebody gets hurt. You're like, it's, it's a family and that's, there's nothing more powerful than that. Man, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, but um, it really is so incredible. I love it. And I, I think um, the point you made about the women's sport growing, it's the same in Canada and, and yet the men's side seems to be declining. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's because of lack of inclusion, because people uh, can't be themselves. And, and um, I think it's so critical and important that you are creating role models and there are so many and it, it continues to grow because it'll, it's just going to take things to the next level. And, and I'm excited to see where the women's game ends up. I think their, their, their trajectory is on the up, upward slope and, and we're going to, you know, uh, see some incredible things and kind of leads me into my last question is what gives you hope for queer people in the sport uh, I don't understand why we can't be more represented right like that's my hope is that you can you know talk to your your young kid your young niece your young nephew whatever and and point to players and say hey they have a similar journey to you these are people you can look up to I mean it's it's the phrase of the day, you know, right now in this country and in Canada, I'm sure, but representation is the name of the game, right? Like, unless you are represented, it is very hard to aspire to the things that you are most more than likely have the potential to become, right? Like, unless you can't, you can see it, you can't be it, right? It, it, it's that weird paradox. But I, I really hope that we start to see a lot more queer folks in the upper echelons of, you know, club admins too, specifically around the NHL. Um, I think one of the, the coolest things that's happened in the past several years is this, the pride tape, you know, that happens towards in the playoffs and postseason and whatnot. Just seeing that there's a rainbow somewhere on the ice is, is really cool. And it's this place where you can look and say, okay, that's cool. I feel like they hear me. I feel like they see me. And, and that's really neat. Uh, and the more pride programming that can happen specifically through the NHL and the national teams, I think the better, I think the national women's hockey league is doing a fantastic job of that. Um, they've been hosting pride month programming all month long, and they're never shy about calling that out on all their social medias and whatnot, but um, there's grassroots stuff happening everywhere. And I think, that's really what's going to drive the inclusion of queer folks in the game. Um, 
I, I just recently started following the Seattle pride hockey, um, which is hugely sponsored by the Kraken, which I don't live in Seattle. I've never been to Washington, but the Seattle Kraken, despite never having stepped foot on the ice yet, um, they're huge proponents of pride and LGBTQIA plus programming and support um, black girl hockey club. They're a huge supporter of black girl hockey club. And I think, you know, the fact that we've got this new club coming on the scene that is really truly allowing people to come into their space and be a part of their organization in a very authentic way sets a lot of precedence for the rest of the clubs um, to step up and do the same. And so I think the more that people on the ground, like the Seattle Pride Club and, and Black Girl Hockey, can start to make their voices heard and partner more strongly with their professional clubs in the area, we're going to start to see this more naturally happen. Um, and that will organically spill over into the youth organizations and the community outreach programs and whatnot. And, you know, it'll take some time, but hockey is going to be one of the more inclusive sports. And I think another facet of that that's also up and coming is like the socioeconomic disparities and who, who can play hockey and what the access is. Right. So um, I think we've got a lot of game changers, forgive the pun, but we've got a lot of game changers out there right now who are seeking to make our game better, make our game more inclusive, both on the men and women's side um, at pro levels, at beer league levels. Right. Um, but it takes time and it takes effort and it's sure as heck not easy. Right. So um, my hope is that queer folks can be at the forefront of all of those movements and demonstrating for everyone else what inclusivity truly means. I love that so much. Emily, thank you for sharing. Continue to inspire. Continue to be a role model. Uh, uh, I appreciate you. And uh, thank you for being here today. Yeah, Brock, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.